what up? That's Namhiswa. Welcome back, guys. Hey, it's your boy Sean. Hey, your girl Mel. Yes. Welcome, SNM Squad. We are How back. are you guys doing today? We hope you guys are absolutely amazing. Yes, guys. Hey, if you're having a rough day, let's turn it around, all right? Good energy, yeah. plus some good content. Most now, definitely. Now, today, yeah. our guy, Thomas Soul. Thomas Soul. All right. I feel like this guy is my teacher. <laughs> this, I mean, he is. Thomas Soul has so much knowledge. Yes. I mean, goodness gracious. And, you know, you can't do nothing but just soak it up. Why didn't we know about this guy in school? I don't, I don't understand. Know. He should be a part of history. But He's so amazing. I wish he was my high school teacher. So when intellectual. I, I mean, goodness gracious. A lot of knowledge. So much knowledge. So, guys, before we get into it, smash that like button. Get this video a big fat thumbs up. And also get inside the comment section. All right. All right. All right. So, babe, you ready to get into it? Yes. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Here we go. The origins of woke. The origins of woke. That's what's up. That All is right. what we will be. Let's get our lesson today. Let's get Here our is. lesson, baby. The vision of the anointed. Now that's a. That's an interesting title. Who are the anointed? They are the elite in the media, in, the, in politics. Uh, all of those who think that third parties ought to be making people's decisions for them. The wow. subtitle is self-congratulation as a basis for social policy. In other words, people who think that everything that's wrong with the, the country is due to the fact that other people are just not as smart as they are. And if only they could, you know, or people like them could take over and make our decisions, we'd be so much better off. But in the early, in early America, didn't this sort of educated class make the decisions for everybody? As far as governmental decisions, yeah. but the government itself didn't make uh, the decisions for everyone. Uh -huh. Now, uh, you know, you, you can't decide where your kid's going to school. You can't decide whether or not they can move a, a halfway house for drug, for drug users next door to you or whatnot. It's out but, of your control. The government that, decides that's that That's right. Stuff. The government decides wow. too many things. They decide also how your children will be raised. Yeah. Uh, you may have an idea about how, at what age children should be introduced to sex and in what manner, with what kind of moral commitment. You mean so as a parent? You as have a this parent, a parent, yes. Uh, the schools have taken that over. By the time you even think about it, they've already had years, you know, of showing. They're passing out condoms to these kids. Passing even out yeah. condoms is not, not even the half of it. Uh, they're, they're showing uh, motion pictures of naked couples engaging in sex, both homosexual and heterosexual, in the seventh grade. Wow, that's and if you complain class. about it, that's, that's considered to be censorship. Stop wow. Right there for a minute. Wow. So basically, the government is controlling, they are controlling our lives. Like, the government we have controls no choice of how our, where our children go to school because they're in zoned schools. We can't make the choice. We cannot. They have made it for us. We can't control what they're learning sexually. I don't think it's appropriate. And we don't you know, know. To be teaching these kids about their sexualities in school. At seventh grade? In school. Like, they should be learning ABCs, one, two, threes, history. Like passing out condoms? Sex. So you basically say, okay, you can have sex, kick a condom. That's not right. That's that not is, right. That should be the parent's choice. Yes. Because um, some families, you know, they want their child to be married. Yes. Before they jump into that. Most definitely. You know, sex and that children most and Most definitely. And, um, That's us. We want our children right. married. Married. Here we go, guys. Let's keep going. Before no. sex. You don't, right. you, you can't pull your kid out of school and say they don't have to put up with this stuff? I guess you could, no. but you'd be... Uh... Well, if you have a private school to put him in, but you have compulsory attendance laws, and if you don't have the money for private schools, then you're stuck. Where did this country get off the track and decide that the federal government should make most of our decisions. Well, it started to some extent in the New Deal, but I think the 1960s is sort of the golden age, if you want to put it that way, of this whole mindset. And that's what the book's about. It's about a mindset. It's not about a series of policies, but of showing how in policy after policy, those who think a certain way will uh, try to take over other people's decisions. How do you characterize wow. the liberal philosophy today from the conservative philosophy? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, I guess the main thing about the liberals, again, is that they think a program will do it. If there's something that they don't like in the society, you have set up a program and that will solve the problem. Uh, I think one of the things that, one of the words they use a lot is solutions. And I argue here and elsewhere that there are no, there are no solutions. There are just trade-offs. 
So, for example, when uh, Ralph Nader launched his attack against the Corvair many years ago, he said it's an unsafe car and it does the, has these safety problems and those safety problems. And in some respects, the, he was correct, not all. Uh, but the fact is, there were other things that a Corvair would do that made it safer than other cars. Uh, and on net balance, it was as safe as the rest of them. Are you saying there are no solutions to our problems as Americans? There are no solutions to anybody's problems. There are trade-offs. You know, trade um, wow. safety is a classic example. Uh, every, every, every year, so many hundreds of thousands of people are uh, vaccinated against uh, measles, smallpox, those kinds of things. Now, this saves and that's several hundred lives that it's estimated. It also causes brain damage to about 30 kids a year. Now, wow. there are no solutions in that. There are just trade-offs. What about crime? Take crime as an issue. Can we solve the crime issue or fundamentally solve it so it's reduced? Well, then that, that's, just, that, that's, that's a, that's a trade-off. You, know, you, know, you, don't, you don't solve it. There will always be crime. There always has been. Uh, but you want to keep it down to some level that's not this astronomical thing we have today. Uh, for example, the people, the, the liberals right now are saying, you know, crime is eased off uh, in New York, and that's true. Uh, there were... There were six times as much crime in New York a few years ago as there was in 1960. Now it's down to five times as much crime as there was in 1960. Now that's not what I regard as a great as a great as a great trend, unless it continues a lot a lot, a lot more. Sharply. Well, liberals think we need more education and we need to help people in the inner city more to cut down crime. There, uh, conservatives would say we have to be tougher on crime. Is either of them correct? Oh, oh, I, I, I no. Well, see, you see, the conservative view is really not a not a solution. It's a it's a trade off. It says, yes, it would be wonderful if we could do all these things to prevent crime in the first place. We just don't happen to be that smart, and so what we do, we put people behind bars who commit violent crimes. Now, a few years ago in East Palo Alto, which is not far from Stanford University, a minority community, low income, they had the doubtful distinction of being the murder capital of the United States in proportion to their population. Uh, the next year, murder and all sorts of other violent crimes dropped tremendous amount, 30, 40, 50 percent in wow. one year. Now, that wasn't because they discovered the root causes of crime or because they worked out everything that was wonderful. They launched a campaign that put a lot of the bad guys behind bars. And when they were behind bars, they didn't commit as many crimes. <laughs> that uh, makes sense to me. And, and the thing that this, 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 this marvelous, you know, even in a high crime area, the great majority of the people are not criminals. And so if you can just put your hands on those people who are raising all the, all the hell in the community and take them out of circulation, the crime rate drops. People That's say there's crazy. undue uh, emphasis on African Americans for committing crimes. Is that true? Uh, Ed Koch know, wrote an all column here that the population is 25 percent African American in New York. 62 percent of the crimes are committed by African Americans. Is that a, a and he said I haven't I haven't checked his figures, but but yeah, throughout the world, this is this is this is not not unusual. Throughout the world, people are disproportionately represented in all kinds of different things. And it's true, obviously, in basketball. It's true in all kinds of other things. Uh, the main thing is not is not to keep people out of jail because they are one race or another, because when you do that, the people who are going to suffer the most will be the black community. Where are you on affirmative action? Against. Why? Well, you can only do one of two things. You can either just uh, judge people individually or you can judge them by groups. This whole notion that you're going to come out with a compromise, uh, I would defy anybody to come out with a compromise on that. You're going to do one of those two things. Now, you can pretend to be doing other things, but that's all you're going to do. That's, those are the only two choices you really have in the end. Most definitely. Uh, again, the people who are the anointed, think of this as a symbolic issue, and they want to be on the side of the angels. They don't ask, what are the consequences? Now, I've studied affirmative action programs around the world. One of the consequences is that those people who are more fortunate in the group that has the preferences, those people take the lion's share of the preferences. Very often, those at the other end of the scale, the poorer people, uh, actually fall further behind. That's true of black share. It's true of Malays in Malaysia. It's true of various groups in India. And there are reasons for that. Uh, you know, you, you can say you must have certain proportion. Nothing is easier than for an employer who, would, who might otherwise locate, let's say, in the Bronx, to locate out in Provo, Utah, where he will be not near any black people, and therefore he will never have lawsuits, and the jobs will be in Provo, and people will wonder why don't people, you know, uh, here have more jobs. Uh, it never seems to occur to, to liberals that other people are not blocks of wood that when you set up certain incentives, they will react to them in certain ways. And when they do that, the result may be the opposite of what you set out to do. How do the anointed refer to people they don't agree with? All sorts of ways. But I think the main thing is they believe that uh, you're not merely in error, but in sin. 
other words, they can't believe that you're just mistaken. Uh, you must have uh, you must have sold out. You must have uh, must be something warped about you. Wow. You guys are for the rich. Mm. You guys only care about the rich guys. Mm. Uh, answer that. How do you how do you respond? Liberal says conservatives only care about rich people. Well, one of the things I go into in the book is that the whole notion of rich is ridiculous. Uh, that most Americans don't stay in the same income bracket, even for one decade. So the same guy who is, quote, rich now was 20 years ago, probably in the bottom 20%. Mm. I mean, I was on a cruise recently, a luxury cruise, and the guy said, you know, if so someone had told me when I was growing up that I would end up on a cruise like this, I would have said, get real, man. You know, that uh, very few people are in that same income bracket the whole time. Right. The yeah. genuinely rich and the genuinely poor, I would estimate to be no more than 3% of the American people. Really? Put wow. together. Really? Yes. Genuinely poor. Now, they, I'm seeing numbers like 3%. when they were talking about health care, they said, uh, what, 30, 20, wait, 30 million people couldn't afford it or something? That's a uh, several million of those were making more than $50,000 a year. So it's not. See, this is one of the things the anointed do. They never <laughs> believe that people make choices. Wow. There are people who, may, who have the money. They, they prefer to put that money into a BMW mm. rather than have rather than to A lot healthcare. of young people didn't want health care. They, they were betting on their health. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. then this allows right. them to buy more stuff they want to buy. So it's not right. a question that they couldn't afford it. It's a question they don't choose to spend they the money. They don't want it. What about uh, mean-spirited? Conservatives are mean-spirited. Wow, so they're, they're bigots. They, like they don't like people. Well, you know, one of the things I, I tell people, people say, you know, you're, you're, you're a very uh, tough person. I, I'm not tough. Life is tough. I'm merely trying to acquaint you with, the, with those facts. You know, back in the 60s, Lyndon Johnson announced a war on poverty. Mm. Am I wrong, but there are more poor people. I mean, in other words... Today than they were then, yes. Yeah, there are more poor people. Yes. I mean, this was a hell of a war. We lost it, apparently, because for the last 30 years, we've been dumping money into these poverty programs. Oh, absolutely. Where's wow. the money going? Oh, it, it, it supports a whole industry of people who uh, run those programs who talk about those programs, really? who search wow. those programs, they bureaucrats, and so on. Doesn't help poor people. No. Uh, the tragedy you see is that the... Do you Please see tell that? me that's not so. We've been voting all of our lives since we were able to vote. We have been bamboozled. And the money doesn't go. You can see that it's not going in the community. It Think can't about be. the schools that they shut down growing up. Think about the programs. When they close the rec centers and things right. that help the community, right. our communities, the Where is this money at? communities, they, they didn't help us. Where is this money going? Into their pockets? With Billions their families? of dollars. Wow. Here we go, guys. Anointed really want to make symbolic statements. And running these programs makes those symbolic statements. They don't really care if in the, in the wake of affirmative action, for example, companies start locating away from minority communities so they don't even get involved in, in legal action. They don't care about that. They've made their statement on the side of the angels, and that's what's important. Have you ever debated Jesse Jackson? No, I haven't. Is that because, would you like to, or would he not want to do that? I have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, I've You'd be more. willing to, I assume. Oh, I, it, maybe. I don't, I don't know. Uh, you think that's too much showbiz? It is. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a, there are people who go out and do this, and I, I'm doing less and less of it. And I tell them the story of an, of an African uh, boxing champion who fought an Irishman in St. Patrick's Day, Day in Dublin. And he lost his title on what the sports writers called a questionable decision. <laughs> <laughs> and so you have to know what forum you're talking about. Right. I, was, I, was, I saw Shelby Steele on with him, and I said, you know, if Jesse Jackson and Shelby Steele each had to present a two-hour lecture to an audience with an average IQ of 120, Shelby would wipe him out. But if they had five seconds each on Donahue, it would be Jesse Jackson all the way. Right. So everything wow. depends upon the forum. Uh, is wow. Jesse Jackson good for African Americans or no. not? He's, He's not. good for himself. Good for himself. And that's true of most ethnic leaders in most groups in most countries in most period, periods that of that history. Is. That what will make what will serve his interest is to keep people paranoid, dependent upon him, dependent upon government. What will serve their interest is typically just the opposite. That's pretty interesting. That's so you're saying that the, the leaders, whatever group, yeah. whatever yeah. Leader, wants the people to be poor and dependent on them as opposed to dependent on themselves. Oh, absolutely. And I, I, you see this in the greatest cynicism in the academic world, where in many places, uh, black uh, organizations on campus have a say on who gets admitted. And they have turned down blacks with excellent credentials, both as students and as faculty members. Uh, for that very reason. Who are the mascots of the anointed? You talk about the mascots of the anointed. They're people whom, whom they choose to um, 
back and whose rights are supposed to override other people's rights. The homeless are a classic example. Uh, I'm, I'm appalled when I see people out there in the street uh, uh, giving money to, to the home. I'm mean, able-bodied men. I, yeah. I think one of the classic pictures to me uh, was in San Francisco when there was this wow. uh, able-bodied white man out in the street uh, begging. And there's this black lady coming along there, uh, very modestly dressed like she didn't have, but she's stopping to open her purse to give him some money, you know. And I thought, good heavens, have we really come to this? And we've been brainwashed by the anointed into thinking this is what we ought to do. What do you say to guys who bum money off of you? Not wow. all of it can be repeated on, on, on the air, <laughs> but the fact is they don't get any money. They don't. And, I, and people who complain now about all these people begging in the street, there's a simple answer. Don't give them money, and they won't be in the street. When you wrote this, what were you trying to accomplish with the book, and did you... Now, I see Hold you looking at me because I'm famous for it does not giving matter. them, I give them money. If you see somebody that's asking for anything, you're going to go in, you're going to find it, you're going to give it to them. Do you remember when I told you when I was a little girl, I was with my cousin and her godfather, uh -huh. and the homeless guy asked him for change. Right. And he shouted at him, you had your chance. You had your chance. And that did something to me mentally. I felt so uh -huh. bad, and I felt like I had to you know, make up for him telling that guy you had your chance. Yeah. Like, well, I look at it as like, if you got it and you can spare it, you're really doing a good deed. You know what I'm saying? If you got it to give someone. But I understand where he's coming from. Like, really, we're not helping able-bodied people. Yeah, like, we're like. Some of them walk and talk better than us. Right. And they're like holding up a sign. And, and they might know, got a big That's home. an easy way to get money. With Refrigerator filled up with so food. So I you understand never exactly what he's saying. But like if you stop doing that, it, it won't It's something it in my heart. Happening. I was yeah. traumatized when he told the guy, you had your chance. Had your chance. Here we and go. And I know Ash, my cousin Ashley, she, you know, yeah. she probably remembers that. Yeah. Here we go, guys. This is deep. Do it. Did, were you nailing liberals? For 30 years of social policy, what were you trying to say? I was trying to reveal the thinking behind that, the kinds of assumptions, the kind of world that exists inside their mind, and therefore why those assumptions are so dangerous in the long run. It's not just the policies mentioned in, those, in that, in that they book. They think they're better than everybody else. Oh, absolutely. There's no question. Mm. Uh, and that's what makes them dangerous. Uh, even all the policies that are mentioned there, 20 years from now, those policies may not be the policies we're concerned about. But that mindset will still be there. And what makes them tremendously dangerous is that facts that contradict what they believe are simply ignored or evaded. Where does the uh, press fall right. into this as the anointed group? Are they part of the Oh, anointed? absolutely. They're a major part of it because one of the reasons that people don't get many of the facts that go against what's believed is that the press doesn't choose to publicize those facts. Give me an example of something the press might not cover or cover well. Oh, uh, a, few years, a few years ago there was a story about um, prenatal care among blacks, that black women get less prenatal care than white women, the infant mortality rate is higher among the blacks. They immediately assume that one causes the other. Now, I, now I, one of the things I like to do is go back to the original source and find out what it said. I went back. On the very same page where it said that, it sh the, the figure showed Mexican Americans get even less prenatal care than blacks, and they have a lower infant mortality rate than whites. So infant wow. prenatal care and infant mortality rate have nothing to do with each other. If you break it down further, uh, black women who have only a high school education, but who are married, their children have lower infant mortality rates than white women who have a college education who are unwed mothers. So it's not race, mm. it's not income, it's not education, it's lifestyle. it's lifestyle. When you live a certain way, there are consequences to that. The media doesn't want to, want, to, want to accept that. Because if you say people's lifestyles have a lot to do with the outcome, then there's no I room for the anointing. I knew something wrong with those stats. It didn't seem right, you know? Yeah. Wow, Tom is so, is, he's so amazing. He's I have so learned blessed more to have this guy. from <laughs> reacting to Tom is so than I learned in my education in Baltimore City public school system. Ain't that something though? Because my like, entire, t from kindergarten to 12th right. grade education. I just feel like we've been re-educated. You know wow, this is amazing. After so many years being out of school that we still can dodge. It's like the knowledge. agenda is to always go back to the race card. Yeah. Like, if you that? can keep us divided, then you can conquer us and you yeah, can keep like, us angry 
and you'll get paid off of our anger and the jail wow. system and you know just all these systems <laughs> but, that were put in place to destroy us it's just thing, like people. everything is like starting to like clear up yeah you know everything is like it's like basic math, like, yeah, like you know what I'm saying? saying? Your lifestyle is a lifestyle. All the stats. More, more black people die than white people on average. Well, think about what black, you go to the supermarket mm. and you see what's in the black cart and you see what's in the white cart. I mean, I do it all the time. Absolutely. I look at different carts and us, yes. you know, we were raised on high sodium diet. Man. Like, seriously. Bad food, man. We have, <laughs> No we, fruit. We're putting salt on everything no and spice was on everything. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The sugar was on high demand. We got to taste it, taste it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's like, you know, we'll. Wow. It, it's, it's, it's just, it's we have to look at, you know, how we're living. That's the lifestyle. How we're living our lifestyle. You know, we had to be um, provided by the government. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My mom was on, you know, food stamps and she got the food stamps and yeah. you know, that was the government. The government was controlling everything, like you said. You know, the the government even made our children get shots before they go to school. They could not Shoot attend school until they got the shot. And we had no choice. We had no choice as parents. Most definitely. And it's like, wow, do we really have to do this? And it's like, yeah, yes. we, you do. Or in order the kids to, are not going to go to school, and no then we're going to come and arrest you. These. Yes, it's all government. We're going to come and arrest you. You yes. and your wife will be behind bars Most because definitely. your kids are not coming to school. Most it's all definitely. ran by the government. Yeah. Um, I'm just so grateful to have Thomas So. Wow, um, He's an amazing educator. To be just spreading out this knowledge and this wisdom to everyone. And it's all over. You can just go into the video and just listen and just soaking it up. Wow, Soak we are truly up. learning. Yes. This yes. is amazing. Yes. Um, it's a good This experience. has given us a new outlook on life. Yep. And I, I hope that this video was spread so other people like us, yeah. inner city people, you know, who were not taught these things in school and we were conditioned to think that it was a racial issue yeah you know and you got to think um when we was growing up it was nothing but drugs nothing but uh, uh a liquor store every corner um the food we was eating it wasn't that up to par it wasn't fresh food it was it was like patched down food you know what i'm saying um the news would always be circulating about, you know, what's going on in neighborhoods, murders, and, and just so much Like he stuff. said, there. That was our People lifestyle. like Al Sharpton and, you know, those leaders, yeah. they have to keep us scared. Yes. You yep. know, that's yep. how they make Depending that money. Depending on the government for safety and, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Yes. So and, um, you know. I definitely have a new outlook on life. I mean, yes, because... This is 2024. It's about to be 2025. Yeah. And it's, you know, I mean, it's just time for a change. Most so. definitely. Um, we want to thank Thomas Soul, man. Yeah. We thank you, man. You are amazing. That was an man. amazing interview. The interview was awesome as well. Yeah. He was really asking some questions that we wanted to know. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. um, as people, we really need these type of people in our life when we was growing up. Really when we was yeah. growing up. But now, you know, we just got to be able to just soak it in and just understand. Better late than stand. never, right? Better late than right? Better late than never. That's what's up. All right, guys, that's our time. We definitely had a blast. Go ahead and smash that like button. Give this video a big fat thumbs up and also get inside the comment section. All right. Anytime or so videos, guys, please drop the link. Drop right? the link in the comment you section the and we'll react to it. We, we want you guys to have an amazing day on purpose. On purpose. Do it on purpose, guys. You guys are beautiful and you guys Bring are some amazing. love. Best quality. And some play. life. That's what's up. All right. We up out of here, guys. Here's your boy, Sean. And your girl, Mel. Hell to the end. All right, guys. Be, be blessed. Peace. Peace.